Thank you for tuning in to the Hope, Strength, Courage podcast, love and support for parents whose kids are fighting for their lives. A weekly podcast created to support parents and caregivers of children diagnosed with cancer, where you will find resources collected to help you face each day with hope, strength, and courage. From interviews with the top experts in their fields, doctors, psychologists, chaplains, and inspiring frontline workers in pediatric oncology as they share their best advice, as well as day-to-day advice collected from other cancer moms and leaders in personal growth and development. From individuals who understand how hard it can be, I hope you will feel better prepared to cope with the day-to-day challenges of caring for your child. Hi, I am Laura Lane, and I am your host. My own daughter, Celeste, was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 12. In 2015, I wrote about our experiences in the book, Two Mothers, One Prayer, Facing Your Child's Cancer with Hope, Strength, and Courage. Since that time, I have dedicated thousands of hours to share with other parents and caregivers the resources, tools, tips, and skills and strategies I learned that helped our family stay happier, healthier, and more hopeful. My goal is to share with you my interviews with experts to support you as you care for a child with cancer. Today's episode features part two of my interview with international speaker and transformational workshop leader, Dr. Sue Mortar, as she takes us through a meditation process that shows us how to tap into spirit essence to know that all will be okay. In last week's episode, she introduced us to the belly breathing technique to get grounded into our core, our wisdom center, how to pull away from fears and back into the core of our being. The continuation of that interview brings us straight into the Mula Banda technique to help us to anchor ourselves into a heart-centered feeling of love. I hope you will enjoy learning these techniques as much as I have. I am pleased to introduce you to Dr. Sue Mortar, international speaker, master of bio and genetic medicine, and quantum fields visionary, Dr. Sue Mortar teaches the retraining of the nervous system and subtle energy system of the body through a process called embodiment. She is the founder and visionary of the Mortar Institute, an organization committed to teaching individuals self-healing techniques and a new approach to life based on quantum science the elevation of consciousness and life mastery. The founder of Soul Science Productions, a production company focused on providing support for autistic and differently abled children through guided meditations and affirmations. She draws from her experiences as a doctor for over 30 years, inspiration from life-changing awakening during meditation, and her personal passion for cracking the code of life itself. Her greatest joy is sharing her discoveries with others. So there's a process that's an ancient Eastern uh, technique called Mula Banda, and it just means root lock. It means, so I'm going to lock my consciousness at the root of my being so that I have access to the real reason that I'm here, to the real reasons that that this life is unfolding the way that it is, and I can proceed in accordance with my wisdom and with my gut feelings of what I'm supposed to do next. So, so in this process called Mula Banda, mm-hmm. uh, that is spelled M-U-L-A, B-A-N-D, Ha, Band Ha, Mula Banda. Uh, it just means uh, root lock. So I'm locking my energy at my root. So you're going to, it's as if you had to, to, had a full bladder, you had to go to the bathroom, but you couldn't get to the bathroom for quite a while. So you're going to, you're squeezing those muscles. Or if you were stopping the flow of uh, going to the bathroom midstream, what you would have to do to make that happen. Um, So you're kind of squeezing the tissues at the base of the pelvic bowl. Ultimately, the complete uh, application of, of this root lock is to lift up, kind of like a Kegel exercise, you're lifting up the tissues at the base of the pelvic bowl. Um, But for now, you can just squeeze them just to get the idea of what we're talking about. So by squeezing them, this big energy field anchors at the tip of your spine, you squeeze the heart, it pulls it in, and there you sit. Now you're coming into the core of your body instead of being scattered out here in this way. 
Now you're going to breathe up and down through the body instead of just taking a breath. So this is the last piece of this technique. You're going to breathe from above your head, just about as high up as your arm would reach. And you're going to breathe, inhale, into your heart while you're squeezing the heart and you're squeezing this mula bandha. And then you're going to exhale from the heart space down into the earth below where you sit. And then your next inhale is going to be an inhale up to the heart space in this big belly. And then you exhale, you pull the belly back toward the spine and you shoot this energy back up through the top of your head and uh, up to above your head. And then you take another inhale and breathe into the body with a big belly, squeeze the heart, breathe it, let it feel good when you're breathing into your body. And then as you exhale, you're going to pull the belly back toward the spine and exhale down into the earth. And then you're going to inhale and come back up into the belly and the heart space and squeeze it all, squeeze Mula Bandha, keep it squeezed the whole time, and exhale right up out the top of your head. So what we're doing in this, in this uh, technique is we're learning how to anchor ourselves in the core of the body. And that slows the mind down and allows us to access a heart vibration. Whether we're thinking about a loving thought or not, we are resonating in a state of love as we're coming into the deep wisdom core center of our being. It's natural. It's automatic. We're automatically in a state of love and presence if we allow this, this repetitious breath through the central channel of the body in this way. I have many support materials that will allow you to, to further that awareness if, uh, if that is of interest to you. I know that it will be helpful for you just to do the practice that we've just shared. Mm -hmm. So if you can continue to contract this root lock and squeeze your heart and breathe up and down through the central channel by breathing in the belly, not in the chest, but lower in the belly, while I describe something uh, that, I, that I believe that Laura and I are going to take this conversation into today, uh, I think that it will be very helpful for you while we're in the conversation so that you'll be able to experience the benefits of this um, as we delve a little deeper into what to do with our perceptions and our, our interpretation of life uh, that in, the, in the ways that, that uh, make sense out of what's happening. In, in our families and in our circumstance regarding uh, regarding the diagnoses and the prognoses around cancer in uh, in this world. So, can I do a quick sort of summary of what I think you have just said? Yeah. That so coming from this position, being a parent whose child has just been diagnosed, I'm full of anxiety. I'm I'm worried beyond anything for my child, don't know what's going to happen, and it just am totally up in my head and yeah. just can't figure it out. And, and what you've said before about this experience, this, this uh, spiritual transcendental experience that you had that we really are in essence are complete and have love, but we need to access that. And exactly. that is actually rooted right in our bodies. Yes. And that when we acknowledge that right inside of us, we are completely whole and everything is fine and everything is perfect. We just have to access it. So all the knowledge that we need, that be able to trust the, 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 the intuition that we need for what to do in this circumstance, that the key is you need to turn the world off and you need to come back inside. Get focused on that heart and that love, that down into that bowl of wisdom that you just described. That that when we get into that, using that as a, a meditation technique, that that is what is going to to center us, ground us, so that we can access the spiritual resources that we need to move forward with the decisions that have to be made, so that we have that peace and centeredness that we can handle the situations that are coming towards us, what's happening to us and to our children. That's Absolutely. Absolutely. And so it isn't just to stabilize the mind um, so that we can make better decisions. What it will do is bring the mind into contact with that spiritual essence that has the understanding that all is well, mm -hmm. that has the picture, the big picture encoded in it 
of why this is happening in my life and why this is happening in my child's life as well. Right. And so while the mind wants to say, you know, why me and why us and what is this, um, deep inside this spiritual essence that we are accessing with the mind as we turn our attention inward instead of being pulled further out from the fear and the duress that occurs under these diagnoses and these circumstances, uh, by coming inward, we we allow our five senses to pick up on the essential self, the spirit being within. And when we do that, we we start to have behind the scenes something come up through our conscious interpretations of life that begin to see that there is a perfect harmonious balance to what is happening. There's actually an, a soulful evolution that is occurring through these circumstances, and therefore they are good, they are not bad. And whereas when the mind is untethered and it's just running crazy, it almost has no choice but to interpret everything that happens in our life from a more defensive, protective standpoint. It, it just can't settle into that, that deep wisdom perspective. Yes, so yes, that, that was a great uh, um, uh, synopsis. That you uh, that you spoke back to me. Wonderful. So now you tell us what the next step is. Okay. So there's another, and if you can just continue to breathe up and down through this central channel while we're having the rest of this conversation, I believe that it will actually activate some of that presence for you um, that we're talking about while we're talking about it. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, there's this thing that I share in my workshops with people that is called the bus stop conversation. And it's about soul contracts and, and life plan, purpose, soul purpose, why we come here, what we're doing individually, uniquely. Each one of us is coming with one common thing and that is to awaken to our true magnificent soulful self. And our individual versions of that show up as our own life path, our own life experiences. And so some people are taking a path that you know is here, some people are taking a path that's going this way. Some people seem that they're just they seem like it's just unfolding, you know, like with great grace in their life. Other people real rocky roads. Uh, the point is whatever we're here experiencing is part of our plan. It's part of why we came and what we're here to illuminate within our own consciousness. And so so in that plan, obviously some part of your soulful contracts has been uh, to find yourself in the scenarios that you are in right now. And so I call it the bus stop conversation in many of my support materials because I'm trying to make it a little lighthearted instead of you know this deep soulful contract conversation, which is tougher for some people to, uh, to wrap their minds around. Now, Given this audience and what you're engaged in, I, I'm guessing that we could probably have the conversation as, as a soul contract conversation, but I'm going to overlay it with the languaging of the bus stop conversation so that it would make sense to you if you're using, utilizing any of the other um, support materials that I have for you so that you get that that's what we're talking about. So it is as if, uh, as we're at the bus stop, catching the bus to come into this life, that we strike up conversations with others at the bus stop. There's certain things that I want to refine and certain things that you want to refine. Something, something that you want to develop and a different thing that you want to develop. And we're all coming together and we're coming into this life. So, so as part of whatever it's going to take for me to unfold in the way that I'm here to grow, soulfully evolve, I'm going to request certain types of circumstances, things that are going to take me to my knees, things that, that seem like they're bigger than what I could have ever imagined that I could handle because when I come back together, collect myself and land in my core and have the wherewithal to look out from deep inside myself, um, from in the midst of whatever difficult circumstance I'm in, I come to know myself in a way I never would have known with any other set of circumstances. So as these things unfold, I get to meet a greater version of myself. So. So I request, I request that there be something that take me and my family to our deep core that, that cause us to see life from an entirely different perspective, that cause us to recognize that, that there is true deep meaning beyond what, what the average individual is encounter, encountering. And, and what I know is that 
big beings take on big projects, and so they request things such as you know life uh, life determining decisions, uh, diagnoses, health conditions, concerns that that cause us to see very richly, very deeply uh, the deepest meaning of life, and that is soulful evolution. So if if I at the bus stop am requesting something of that magnitude, what I know is that I'm an old soul and that I am wanting the real deal uh, depth to come onto my radar screen so that I can drop into myself and find a version of my soulful self with this mind that no other set of circumstances would have caused me to awaken to. So there is great beauty in what is happening. And if I can look at it as a great gift from the beginning, you know, I, I work with many, many people that are in, in cancer diagnosis circumstances and, uh, and, and many with, with their children being in that situation as well. And after they are through these circumstances to a great degree, a uh, long time, they've been through it, they always turn around and look at what, what it built within themselves and within their family and who they became. And they come to a place of gratitude at some point for the circumstances that they have been encountering, that they've gone through. And so what I know is great healing happens by the end of a scenario, whether whether a child heals and comes through it, whether they lose the child and and they're left to face a whole other version of life, ultimately we get to a place in the conversation where there's deep integration and there is deep gratitude for the amazing spiritual beauty that evolved up and out and through them and through their family dynamic. And, and, and in those moments, so much healing happens. So I started working with people to get them to the state of gratitude sooner rather than later, so that they're in the wave of that gratitude as they go through every step of decision making and every uh, portion of the process, so that the soulful self is building neurocircuitry to have a stronghold in this life and the life experience of every individual in it so that it's able to express out through the, the, the fearful protective personality so that they are masterfully guided through this circumstance knowing that these circumstances were requested at the bus stop. They were requested by every individual that is going through it. And <clears throat> the real soulful self that, that required such big circumstances um, is in this because it takes this big of a circumstance to evolve. It, you know, something smaller wouldn't have pushed or shoved or shape shifted or awakened the depths of this being. Uh, the way these circumstances are, something, uh, so we're living from this soulful place rather than, than the personality place that's trying to, you know, make sense out of why me and why us and, and why, why my son or my daughter, that, that your son or your daughter on a soulful level is in the perfect set of circumstances. Ultimately, ultimately, if we want to know that there is a heaven on earth, that there, that, that, this, that there is only one thing happening here, and it is good, and it is in my favor, which is what heaven would be presenting for us. And what quantum science is showing us is that that is here now. And our job is to learn how to rearrange our thinking so that we can look out through these circumstances and see it as that, to see it as good when it's so painful and so scary and so frightening that if we can look for the gift, then we're retraining ourselves while we're in it to be able to interpret this, this soulful evolution as heaven on earth. And when we seat ourselves in the core of our body, we have closer, quicker, easier access to this soulful presence that I'm talking about. 
And that is the version of us that can see these circumstances as good and teaching and evolving and as beneficial to the bigger picture. Uh, and, and whenever we can tap into that bigger picture, we are, we are in our wholeness. Mm -hmm. And when we are in our wholeness, healing is inevitable. I love Dr. Sue's bus stop conversation. It resonates with everything I have experienced in my life. I truly believe that everything I have been through, the loss of my mom and sister in a car accident when I was nine, the loss of my daughter to cancer, difficult relationships, the heartaches and dark nights of the soul that have taught me all the lessons I needed to become the strong spiritual guided woman I am today. Having that perspective has given me healing and a sense of wholeness. I hope you too can appreciate what Dr. Sue is sharing in this conversation. This has been part two of three. In my final segment with Dr. Sue next week, we will close out the conversation by discussing how to create loving, unconditional stability to help your child heal. I hope you will join me next week for the conclusion of this amazing interview. In the meantime, to learn more about Dr. Sue Mortar and her programs and upcoming workshops and retreats, please visit her website, drsuemortar.com. Before we end our show today, we have one last segment. Over the last few years, I have asked other cancer moms what advice they wish they had known when their child was first diagnosed. I've compiled that information and will be sharing their advice each week. You can download the top 101 pieces of advice that I put together as a mini ebook at twomothersoneprayer.com. Today's advice comes from Tanya. Tanya says, find somewhere peaceful that you can escape to when you need a minute. Our hospital had a garden with a really nice fountain. I found a bench that was somewhat secluded. That's where I went when I needed to think, to cry, etc. Thanks, Tanya, for sharing that. Our hospital had a chapel, but I would have loved a quiet spot in nature to go to when I needed time to reflect. If you have advice you have learned along the way that you wish someone had told you weeks, months, or years earlier, I invite you to fill out the contact form on the website, twomothersoneprayer.com, and I will be sharing your advice with our listeners on future shows. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule today to listen to the Hope, Strength, Courage podcast. I look forward to sharing more experts and advice with you again next Wednesday. Please remember to take a minute to, to subscribe to the show. Thanks also need to go out to our Hope, Strength, Courage production team, which consists of my wonderful assistant, Tracy Ogilvy McDonald, Andrew Braun at Braun Audio and Audio Geek, music by Fizz Anthony, social media support by Marife Constantino, and graphic design by Amy Hosmer. To learn more about myself, Laura Lane, and to order my book, please visit lauralane.ca.